Okay, welcome back. It's good to be back. I haven't made a movie in a little while. I've been wanting to, and now that I have the opportunity, <clears throat> excuse me, I wanted to make a movie on biasing. I have a discussion about setting up the bias of your uh, amplifier. I know there are different methods out there that people like to use for biasing. Some people bias based on the current at the cathode. Some people like to bias based on negative voltage at the grid. And uh, some people like myself, I and I like to bias based on the current at the anode. I think that's the uh, proper way to bias. Um, but I welcome discussion from anybody out there or any kind of pointers, suggestions um, on, on the topic. Um, so let's get started. Uh, in order to to bias properly, you need uh, uh, some key ingredients. Uh, some of those are you need to have a way of uh, measuring the current at your at the anode or the output of the power tube. You need to know the the voltage at the anode, and you also need to know the max dissipation in watts uh, rating, the max dissipation rating of your particular power tube. Um, at the anode. Now this is my DR504 clone that uses EL34s and the max dissipation rating at the anode is 25 watts. And we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, before I go any further I should have a, I guess a safety moment and just a reminder to anybody who's working on their amps out there especially if it's powered up uh, and you know open like this is to always be safe um, you know be grounded uh, I like to wear rubber soled shoes uh, stand on carpet because I'm in my basement and it's a concrete floor so stand on carpet and I like to only reach in with one hand keep the other one behind my back and then use these uh, uh, plastic pointers that came with my soldering sets or I'll use chopsticks. Uh, chopsticks are handy as well. So let's continue. Uh, let me show you what I've done to measure anode current on my amp. What I've done <clears throat> is I've installed test ports on the back of my amp for uh, measuring anode current and you can also use it to measure the uh, voltage at the anode. Let me uh, come around here so you can see from the other side what I've done and these what I've done here is I've installed a 1 ohm resistor um, on the line between my uh, anode of the tube to the uh, output transformer and thanks to Ohm's law over one of the voltage drop over a 1 ohm resistor will be equal to the current so <clears throat> let's come back around now my amp is running and I have the uh, my voltmeter uh, set up to my ports and we'll switch it to volts and okay so I'm measuring 38 uh, I'm measuring 38 millivolts and because um, I'm using a 1 ohm resistor that is uh, telling me that there's 38 milliamps at the anode. So now what I can do is uh, take the uh, take the uh, pull my test uh, my tester lead out and ground it to the chassis then come over here and you can see that I have 470 volts at the uh, anode so what we do I'll just switch this off now the next thing to talk about is uh, settings for the bias so I don't know if it's a rule of thumb or um, just uh, fairly common um, from what I've read though that typically 
uh, you bias to around 70% of the rated dissipation. Um, and then that's really a, a, a good starting point for, uh, and that's based on at, at idle. Now, there's no hard and fast rule on what the true pop, proper bias setting is, but I think generally around 70% of your idle current and and then, you know, you can vary it uh, plus or minus maybe 5% or plus 5 minus 10% uh, just to suit your taste, what sounds better for you. Um, but what we need to do first is calculate. You see I measured the, the idle current. But what we need to do is still calculate uh, what is 70% uh, of the um, uh, dissipation uh, at idle. So, and that's pretty straightforward. You take 70%, uh, you take 0.7 times the rate of dissipation, which in my case is uh, 25 watts. So 70% of 25 watts is 17 and a half uh, and then you take 17 and a half and you divide it through by the uh, measured voltage at the anode which is minus 470 and that gives you 0 0.037 amps or 37 milliamps so we know that if um, we bias to 37 milliamps we're set at 70 percent of uh, rated uh, dissipate max dissipation and as we've read from my uh, test ports I'm at 38 milliamps which is pretty close so and I tend to like around 38 milliamps uh, in the sound of my amp, my high watt so or I should say my clone so um, so that's really how I do it. I've ran through it uh, pretty quickly, but that's how I do it. Oh, one thing I haven't mentioned is um, uh, I have also installed, let me show this to you, because you'll need this. Uh, what I've done is I've installed um, a pot, a trim pot, for, and I've uh, made it a, a variable resistor, because if your if you have a fixed bias amp like this or old fenders, I have a 60s, 1966 Fender Vibrolux and it works on the same principle. It's fixed bias. So you need a, a, a pot, a trim pot, uh, a variable resistor to adjust your um, grid resistor, grid resistance, um, so you can uh, adjust your um, current, bias current on the anode. So what I've done is, um, let me see if I can, sorry for the wavy camera, see if I can bring that into focus here. There's my, uh, my pot, and what I've done is I've wired that to, um, I've wired that to my, uh, and you, this is my, let me zoom in a little here. I'm sorry for my lousy camera work. Um, I've wired that in series with the uh, bias uh, resistor on the preamp board. And uh, now, when you do this, um, lessons learned, I guess. Um, I used a, I had one kicking around, a 10, 10K uh, sweep trim pot. And what you really should use is more like a 50k sweep. Um, it gives you more adjustability. So um, I'm able to get away with just a, a 10k sweep, but I recommend a 50 just to have more adjustability. And um, I guess other things to mention, I have, uh, as you saw, I have two sets of test ports, one for each power tube on the back. You're going to want to make sure that your um, your resistors, your one ohm resistors that you set up, have really the exact same value, so that you they read the same, uh, or you know that you're getting um, similar uh, readings, uh, similar values from your two power tubes that you can compare to. So over time, your uh, values 
your bias values will drift. Um, that's, I guess, another discussion. We'll, we can get into a deeper discussion on this, but it's good to know that you're comparing apples to apples, so to speak, when you're looking at your two, uh, uh, the bias and comparing them between your two uh, power tubes. So, um, I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover, so uh, um, we'll uh, see you next time.